Hey everybody, Susan Modest here. Hope you're having a fantastic day. Today I want to share some thoughts with you that I think might help you with your marketing. In fact, I know for a fact that if you are able to apply some of this, it will definitely help your marketing. In fact, it might even feel like you've opened up some kind of secret vault, which is how I felt. So it's based on a book that I'm reading that's called Habits of a Happy Brain. Retrain your brain to boost your serotonin, dopamine, oxytocin, and endorphin levels. So we have heard of all of those chemicals. I think we all have, but how does that apply to marketing? So let me kind of break down a little bit um, and I'm not finished with the book. There's a lot more to go. So I might have some more to share with you, but so far, this is, is what I've, my takeaway that was enough for me to see how I can apply this to my own marketing and made me also want to share it with you because I know that many of you guys that are Facebook friends with me are also marketers or who are watching my YouTube videos may be finding the videos because of interest or participation in marketing. So I think it can help us all. So again, we've heard about all of these brain chemicals um, before and just to go over them briefly, the way I like to think of it, the way that it really struck me as I, I was reading it, is kind of think of it as our most primal drivers, our most primal motivators. So things that we don't even have to think about and, and things that most of us don't think about, and we might think that we're actually beyond it, but the more that you uh, delve into these chemicals, you realize that everybody and almost everything is still at that basic primal level. And, and after I go through this video, you may be able to see it in news articles you read or the most recent Facebook debate, most recent Twitter debate, and you'll see where some of these drivers play a role in it. So the way that I look at those four neurochemicals is they are members of a village, of a very primal village, where the only, the only thing that they're trying to achieve is survival and continuation of a species. Yes, as enlightened as you and I think that we are, most of the things that we do are still based on those things. Okay, most of the fights that people are having, most of the debates that they're having actually comes from those same chemicals being secreted as would have been secreted by primitive man. And so that's where consciousness comes in because it's what separates us. But consciousness isn't always our greatest motivator. Consciousness is more of a, a way to take us to the next level in creativity and uh, in overall connectedness, and it's not really primal. It, it's ancient, but it's not really primal in the sense of meeting the, our most primitive needs. So, but that being said, let me go back to my village of drivers. So let's start with serotonin. Serotonin is the chief. Serotonin is the king or the queen. It is what motivates us to want to achieve social dominance. And what makes social dominance feel so good to all of us, no matter how humble we think that we are. We try to achieve social dominance with whatever it is that we have. So for men, it may be their um, physical strength, it may be uh, their jobs and their ability to acquire resources. For women, and now, in more recent times, it could also be their jobs and their earning potential, but much, 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 much less so in women. Uh, and, and in fact, you know, some, that's why I think in society, we still kind of don't feel comfortable with that woman who's so driven by that. I mean, we might think, oh, it's cute, whatever. But, what, you know, if we're pitted against a woman like that, we kind of think, or not we, but people kind of tend to think, why is she being so bitchy <laughs> or something like that? Um, it's, it's not the tendency that we associate with women. And I'll get to that a little bit later on. But now it could be that. But it could also be things like beauty and our constant drive to want to look 
good. Um, and that's men and women, but more so women, because in primitive times, a good looking woman was considered to be more um, healthy and probably a better prospect for procreation. And those are things we don't even think about. We don't know we're still driven by that, but we are. And same thing with men. Men were considered of higher, having higher resources. Women, without even thinking about it, would naturally think that that person has more of an ability to take care of them and take care of any offspring that they have. So serotonin is that social dominance neurochemical driver. It's the king and the queen. And so people do things to try and achieve that feeling of social dominance. So keep that in mind. Okay. Next one is uh, endorphins. So endorphins are actually a group of hormones um, that fall under that, that umbrella. And a lot of people think of that as being feel-good chemicals. And they are, but the thing that I think people forget, these are the medics <laughs> of, um, or the therapists maybe of the village. They are the ones that see that there's been some kind of pain, some kind of injury physical or mental and then they send the chemicals are are intended to then make people feel better so there are less feel good hormones than more analgesics to kind of numb the pain from whatever it was whether physical or emotional um, and you can see why that would be a good thing because people can experience that from things like um, exercise so acute exercise, runner's high, that, you know, after you get to that point where you feel like you just can't go anymore, you think your lungs are going to give out, you think you're probably going to die, and then the endorphins kick in and gives you a little bit more, I'm a little bit more, sometimes a lot more uh, motivation to keep going, it means your body could have gone, go, oh, keep going all along, because your body will not do more than it can, it's the fact that it can, right? But you didn't think so initially until you got those feel good hormones or those analgesics that helped you to keep going. And then after a while, that becomes a motivator in itself where a person wants to achieve that feeling that the endorphins get. And they'll usually typically engage in whatever that thing was, like the running or the exercise or whatever it is that was strenuous and at some points questionable, but you start seeking that. So you start doing it more and more. Of course, exercise being a functional way to do that. Um, but that's what people are after there. Dopamine. People are very familiar with this one. This is the one that's often associated with addictions that are not so good. But this is the chemical that makes people do things. It kind of makes the villagers get up and actually do something. So these are the motivators of the village um, that say that, you know, there's a reward waiting for you if you do such and such thing. And it's based on a reward system. And the anticipation of reward is what actually raises your dopamine. It's not even so much the, the receipt of the reward. I mean, yes, it, it, that's all part of the, the whole cycle. But it's the anticipation of that reward that's enough to drive people to engage in the behavior, whatever it is. And sometimes people seek those kinds of, that, that kind of high, so to speak, from synthetic drugs or from drugs outside of their own chemicals. Um, and then there are, of course, there's diseases associated with um, lower levels of all of these things because disease is more like dis-ease, right? So something's in, not in balance. So, and again, when it is in balance, that's why they're considered um, happiness chemicals or happiness hormones. Uh, on, on the contrary, when they're not there, that's when they can lead to depression, anxiety, and, and that's all of them, all of these. Probably serotonin and dopamine being the ones that are most um, well known for causing those kinds of problems. Dopamine has also been known to cause things or be associated, not cause, associated with things like Parkinson's and um, other motor type diseases. So, um, but, you know, I'm, this is not a medical talk that I'm having with you right now, just kind of giving you some reference points for your own research. 
Um, and then the last one is oxytocin. So that is considered the love hormone. And so um, it's secreted by women right after they have a baby or as part of the contraction process and having a baby. And that's why a lot of times people will say that, you know, it was, they remember being in a lot of pain, but the moment that they actually have the baby, it's like they no longer associate that baby with the pain. So that's nature's way of healing that wound. Because could you imagine um, if, you, if you associated the worst pain in your life with somebody you had to take care of um, in in the wild, <laughs> in primitive times, um, not, not taking into consideration higher order thinking. And of course, there's dysfunction with that. So sometimes it doesn't always work out the way it's supposed to work out between mothers and kids either. But theoretically, that is, is what a hormone like that would be for. And so it's considered not only the, the love hormone, but also, I, I might have said this already, uh, the, really the bonding hormone. So the one that might be considered the long-term social, um, socially binding, okay, social support motivator. So, so those are going to be, that's going to be the reason for these villagers. They're going to be the villagers that want to to hold the village together. Because if you think about it, all these other drivers could just uh, be everybody for themselves, especially serotonin and even dopamine, um, you know, those kinds of things. It can all, all lead you to kind of have this mindset of every, every man for themselves. Uh, oxytocin, just in, in keeping a perfect balance, is that hormone that is going to make society want to support each other. So if anything is missing in a person or is dysregulated in a person, you could experience problems. It's all about balance. And it's the same way in society. That's why I liken it to a village because it was easy for me to understand that way because you can see if there's people who are only concerned with social dominance and they're not so concerned with, with the social supports or um, community, then you can see how you can have a really big problem. And we see it every day, right? With, with some people who are in power. So then you have these people here who are um, more the, the socially driven people who are saying, you know, no, we need to balance this out. And um, there's always, I guess, going to be that tug of war between drivers, right? Between motivators and, and reasons for it. All primal. And, and that's, that's the interesting part about it. It's all so primal. No matter how much money is in our bank account, no matter how far we think we've evolved, all of these drivers are primal. So how do you use this? How, do, how can you use this in your everyday life? Well, first of all, seek balance. Seek, seek to um, always seek balance. And, and that's probably the direction that my interests are going towards more and more with everything that I learn is in helping people to achieve balance and the, even recognizing the importance of balance and uh, even how energy plays a role in all of this and how energy healing can actually um, either trump some of this or even serve to help balance some of this, even though it's chemical. Okay, but, but that's a, a topic for another thing. How can you use this as a marketer today, which is where I began this whole talk? Think of your client or your potential customer, your prospect, as being driven by these four chemicals. These are their happiness chemicals. If these are not balanced, they're not going to be happy campers. So you can think about providing things that help to increase any one of these or all, if you are able to do that, they're naturally going to be attracted to what you're offering. Okay, so if you can find a way to make them feel more dominant or get better at whatever it is they're doing, so it could be a marketing program, but if you can tell them that there's a skill where they can become the best this and that, whatever, that's going to appeal to their serotonin driver. That's gonna to appeal to their social dominance driver. Okay, if you have a community, if you have something like um, a Facebook group where you get special sauce kind of tips and supports, that's gonna to appeal to the oxytocin 
driver. That's going to show the connection, a bond. Now you have to come through with all of this. You have to fulfill all of this because each one of these chemicals are secreted, but it's not secreted for long term because it's meant to keep people just always go, reaching for something, get there, reach for something, get there, reach for something, get there. Okay. That's, so it's going to be something that you, you have, you can't fight nature. You can't fight um, nature. You can work with nature. You can use it um, for the betterment of all by understanding it. So you want to make sure that you constantly supply that to your people, whether it's through another product that gives them another um, edge in some way, again, that social dominance, or you could just continue to show, to give them the social supports in the group, for example, um, resilience, that's going to be the en endorphins, that's going to be the, the kind of uh, analgesic for when there is pain. So again, solving people's pains when you do that. And you, you are ideally helping or appealing to more than one of these drivers at the same time. Okay. So you might be giving them something that, that gives them some social dominance, but is also solving a problem. And if you do that, you have a bang up product. If, if you do stuff like that, right. Or, or marketing in your marketing. If, if you have an ad that you're putting out and you make sure that your ads appeal to all of these things, then you're going to have a stronger, more appealing ad. And you know what? Your customer, client, the audience, the person reading that, it's primal. It's like I said at the beginning of this video, they don't even know why they're so drawn to this thing that you're offering. And it may not even be the thing. It's the fact that you are triggering their own primal drivers when you are supplying what you're supplying. So there's a lot more I could say about all of these things. Um, take care of yourself first. And so some of the best ways to increase these happiness hormones in yourself is to eat well, exercise, meditate. Meditate was across the board for all of them. Um, dopamine, you know, those, the, that's going to, dopamine and oxytocin sometimes with the, the bonding thing. And this is probably another video, but I'll just stick it in anyway. Um, dopamine is more like the one night stand kind of love and oxytocin is more like the long-term uh, kind of love. So the things that you can do to increase oxytocin, for example, it would be to hug. <laughs> you might've heard um, to hug eight times a day. Uh, things like orgasm and, and the differences that orgasm uh, was found in the study that was cited in this book to um, only be secreted when the person was orgasming with somebody that they loved or cared about, not with the one night stand. Okay, that's more, again, your dopamine, your dopamine, the re immediate reward is, is being triggered. And some people are going to be addicted to that. And so they're going to keep doing that, right? Um, but is could this be a clue on how to solve some of that? Yes, it could. Um, if if you're having marital issues now, my first um, my PhD is in, in mental general uh, psychology, mental health counseling, and general psychology. So, had I wanted to do any kind of marital marital or family counseling, that would be something that I would explore a lot more. I, it's not something I specifically want to do, don't want to do any therapy like that necessarily, because I think it's, it's uh, restricted. I think typical therapies are very, very limited on their thought process. They don't take into consideration the whole thing and the whole person. But if I were working with somebody and I knew they were having marital issues and if they wanted to, because they have to be motivated, I would I would talk about hugs. <laughs> I would talk about hugs. And not all hugs are created equally. If your wife or your girlfriend wants to snuggle, I suggest that you do. She's keeping you alive longer. She's lowering your cortisol, which is in, in opposition to all of these, by the way, cortisol, that stress hormone, opposes all of these things, all of these feel-good chemicals. Um, so you always want to try to keep your cortisol down. Meditation helps with that. Exercise helps with that. I'm talking fast because there's so much I want to get in here. Um, for you guys, but um, going back to the whole hugs are not created equally kind of thing, studies have found, at least a study that was by Dr. Sarah Gottfried that, that I uh, read, she said that the hugs of women, 
seem to trigger more oxytocin in men, children, and other women. So all hugs are great, but the hugs from a woman, special, especially powerful for increasing oxytocin and lowering cortisol. So think about that, value the people around you, apply this to your marketing, and let me know your thoughts. And as I learn more from the book, I'll probably share it if I feel like it applies. So have a great day and thanks for watching.